as you can see behind my table is my reveal wall. I sell all of my images uh, already printed and finished. You give me one camera with a good lens and you give me one girl, then I could make $3,000 a day. I've spent my life mastering my craft and I want to honour it by making beautiful portraits that are worth being paid and you're worth being paid. Hi everyone, I'm Sue Bryce and I'm a portrait photographer and today I want to talk about pricing. Uh, I've been a portrait photographer for 27 years so I've interestingly enough started my career in an already operational wedding and portrait studio in about 1989 and I soon became a photographer and I stayed an employed photographer for 12 years. So the first 12 years of my career I not only worked in an established studio with lots of props and backdrops and lights. The camera that I was given at 22 years old was a Hasselblad medium format film camera. It was a camera that I could never afford in a million years. And the average sale of our studio in 1989 was in the thousands. So basically, I didn't have to go through the startup phase of business which is super crazy because I think about all of my students now and what they're going through in terms of starting their studios at home, starting off at that shoot and burn, $150 for everything, and slowly working their way up into the professional ranks and the professional pricing. So over the years, I watched wedding photographers charge anywhere from sort of $1,000 to say $17,000, being a really good a range of the field that I know internationally and I'll explain it to you. My boss at the time of me in my 20s was a wedding photographer and his average sale was $7,000. Now that was right through the 90s. So he was at the highest end of wedding photographers in our country uh, for that 10 year period. And I saw him earn $17,000 for a wedding once and I saw him also earn 3,900, which would be the lowest grade that he was prepared to spend. So I watched him over the years bounce between this average and one of our biggest years being 38 weddings at an average sale of $7,000. So I watched him for 10 years. I designed his wedding albums and we shot portraits as well. And as I grew up into my 20s, I took over shooting all of the glamour style portraits and he would go out and do families on location. So our studio operated with him shooting weddings, a couple of big family shoots a week on location, and me shooting Monday to Saturday portraits in natural light inside the studio. And our price list was very similar to what my price list is now. Our average sale was a little bit different but my price list was very similar. So we operated at an average sale of around $1,800. Now an average sale is when you add up all the clients you had for the year, your total income from those clients, divide it by that number of clients. Because a business is a numbers game and it's a game of averages. And really what we're trying to achieve here is the highest possible average across the board. So the first thing I teach any photographers is when you walk out of the sales room and you've done a $4,000 sale and you fist bump, you know, ear punch, back somersault, and you're like congratulating yourself because you just did a $4,000 sale, that's wonderful. But if your average is $1,800 and that $4,000 sale doesn't pump up that average by very much, you really just did an $1,800 sale, which is great. Same thing applies when you walk out of the sales room and you've just done a $400 sale, which for a professional in business with an $1,800 average is considered a bum sale. You didn't do a $400 sale, you did an $1,800 sale. So I challenge you in business to reset your average every month. I then challenge you to stop looking at the 400s and the 4000s as being bum sale and good sale and start looking at it as a law of averages. It's a numbers game. Your job is to get the numbers going through your studio so you can constantly hit this average 
so that you can then say my average is. Now currently my average is three and a half thousand dollars meaning some people might spend more and some people might spend a little bit less but my average evens out to three thousand five hundred dollars. If I do a bum sale I'm still at three thousand five hundred dollars. If I do an eight thousand dollar sale I'm still at three thousand five hundred dollars. Then that stops you from doing the high and low and it starts getting you to focus on how do I lift my average, okay? And that is a mindset that significantly shifted me in my business. How do I lift my average sale up? Now, I tell everybody that there's an international standard for wedding photography pricing. I've seen it. Even if it's not so much a spoken thing, the truth is, is I watch it all the time. It starts like this. You're going to laugh because it's kind of, I've seen it for years. You pretty much do a free wedding because you want to become a photographer. And interestingly enough, you usually find a gateway into photography by doing an event. And an event is often a wedding. You have an interest in photography. Oh my gosh, would you photograph my sister's wedding? So you go and do a free wedding. And you think you're pretty awesome. You find out you could charge four, six, eight hundred dollars. And I've seen everybody do it. They go and do their second wedding. They charge four hundred dollars. I did it. You get four hundred dollars and hey, what do you know? That's exactly what I earned this week in the job that I hate. I could do this for a living, okay? But you're not considering the idea that there's a cost of goods, a cost of doing business, there's tax, there's profit margin. In fact, you're not even thinking about a profit margin. You're thinking about the $400 cash somebody just handed you. So then you start shopping around and you realize that a lot of the lower end photographers are earning nine to a $900 to $1,000 a wedding. So you tell the next person, hey, look, there's a cost of goods and a cost of doing business and I really need $900 to shoot this wedding. And again, you're not thinking about the cost of goods or the actual cost of doing business because you're handing this over digitally. So you charge $900, you just got twice the amount that you earned in the job that you hate. Now things are starting to get real. Before you know it, you realize that you need some education in this wedding market because not all weddings are easy. We all know that. In fact, wedding photography will probably be the situation that teaches you the most about being a photographer. You're going to have to deal with people large scale. And I'm talking, you know, the family that don't want to stand together versus the people that don't want to be in the same room together versus the drunk uncle versus the the three people that have cameras better than yours that are telling you how to do your job and then all of a sudden you're shooting in extreme lighting situations. I'm in a room with no light and I'm in a room with too much light. I'm in harsh light. Then God challenges you by throwing in a storm. And so here you are with mother nature working against you families working against you, light working against you, the bride and groom working against you, and suddenly you realize you don't have enough equipment and you're certainly not earning enough money to buy more. So you go and you launch yourself into the world of education and you find that most photographers in the professional realm are earning at least $1,800 to shoot a wedding. So you charge yourself at $1,800, you start buying equipment, you start getting better educated, you start vlogging yourself, you're going to book 36 weddings next year, you're still working the crappy job, you need to let go of that, and all of a sudden you're paying off the credit card with all that equipment, and you soon realize that $1,800 a week barely cuts it, and there's no profit, and you're working 12 hours at the wedding and then 12 hours to process it, and you're on a minimum wage, okay? Two things happen here. You say, weddings are killing me. I can't sustain this. I don't even want to do this anymore. You cry, you give up, and you come to the portrait realm. <laughs> That's usually when I meet most photographers. <laughs> That's what I did. I'm like, I can't sustain this, and I don't want to, and I left weddings, and I became a portrait photographer. Or you endure 
you learn, you fall in love with weddings, and you charge more, and you come up through the ranks of the $3,000 photographers, and then the $5,000 photographers, and then the $7,000 photographers plus. And that's why about 3% of our market are up in that round, up in that round because they've both sustained and started to flourish in that market. So it's an interesting journey and it's an evolution on pricing. So that was a long way of getting to portrait pricing. You see, I never had to go through an evolution of pricing because I started my career in an established studio that had an established price. And basically we sold a la carte images, meaning single images on the wall. And yes, our average sale was $1,800, but that didn't mean you had to spend $1,800. That meant some people could spend $5,000 and some people could spend $500, but that was our average sale. So when I educate photographers on portrait pricing and I show them the a la carte pricing, instantly we go into the fear, scarcity, and lack mentality. What if they only buy two? True. What if they buy 22? But what if they only buy two? That's true, but what if they buy 22? But what if they only buy two? And that's where your business is gonna operate, in a mentality and an energy of scarcity and fear that people will only buy two. Now people will sometimes only buy two, and then sometimes people will buy 22. That's the whole point of law of averages. Okay, so, when I was in business as an employed photographer, we had an average sale of $1,800. 12 years later, I left and started my own business. I went straight away into a projected fear of scarcity and lack because that's where I was at in my personal growth. So straight away, I was like, what if they only buy two? And then of course, somebody only bought two. I cried, rent wasn't getting paid. What was I gonna do? I couldn't survive. I wasn't focused on the law of averages, I was focused on lack and what if they did not buy and of course what you focus on expands, so what do you think happened to me in the first year in business? A whole lot of people only bought two because that's what I was projecting. Oh my goodness. In hindsight, it blows my mind and if you're past the stage, you're listening to this going mind blowing, been there, done that, maybe you never went through the stage, you surpassed it. I've certainly met students and friends that never went through that stage because they were already past the value stage. But if you're stuck in this stage, in this phase right now, you're either experiencing two things. You're not listening now because you've tuned out because you're not ready to hear the truth. You're gonna stay stuck for a little bit longer. That's okay, okay, something will move you. Usually rock bottom is your tipping point. Or you're feeling pain around this conversation because you know it's true and you know you're doing it. Okay, so let's say you open your pricing at an a la carte pricing and your images start at $150 and go up from there. You're going to very quickly learn what your average sale is over a period of maybe five to 10 shoots. You're gonna get a very strong idea if you take all of your income, divide it by the last 10 shoots you did and say, wow, I've had some people spend 300 and some people spend 1200 but the truth is, is I'm averaging out at 500 bucks, which means in order to be sustainable, I'm going to have to do 10 shoots a week because I want this much money in my business and if my average is 500, then it stands to reason that I either lift up my average or lift up the numbers I'm shooting. So here's an interesting fork in the road. Let's say you like your average at $500, but you want a higher volume. That means you're going to have to do more marketing to get a higher volume to get a higher income. Let's say you like the lower volume, so you want a higher average. That means you're going to have to raise your prices and your product packages in order to get a higher average so that you can be more boutique, which is low volume with higher end, higher average. That's what I am. I want two shoots a week at an average of three and a half thousand dollars each so I can get a nice low volume of shoots with a nice high average. That's where I operate the most comfortably. So when I left my studio and I started to learn what my scarcity mentality was and what my law of averages was around pricing, I kept the pricing from my original studio into my own business. 
but I did not suddenly value myself so I started to push the money away straight away until I learned to receive the money. You can watch more on receiving money. I talk about it all the time. But right now, I've got to get you into a pricing mentality. Okay, so what I did with my pricing mentality was I started to shift my value, my value of what I thought it was worth, because I realized my core belief was people will not pay for this, which means I didn't believe in the value of what I was doing and what I was making and what I was selling. And rule number one internationally in selling education is you cannot sell something you do not believe in and you cannot sell something you do not value. That is a simple truth, a simple, simple, incredible truth. If you shift the value, you will be able to sell it. Now, I now teach big workshops on the education of pricing and selling, but first I gotta get you into a mentality where you can charge whatever you want. You know, photographers in this world, one photographer just sold a print for something like $8 million recently, one photograph. He believed it, he sold it, that's cool, that's up for him. But if you're, sell, if you're saying the community won't pay more than $150 and they won't buy images, they just want images on a thumb drive, it's your blocked mentality. You believe this, you are wrong. I've been charging thousands of dollars for portrait photography for 27 years, but I grew up in a professional studio. So maybe what you haven't had is the experience of actually being in a working professional studio and maybe that's what you should get education around before you start setting your brain to believe that that is the only way because that is not the truth, that is just your truth and that is not the truth, okay? That is not the truth in this industry. My business has survived two global financial crises, two. Two, and I'm a luxury item. I am something that should not survive a global financial crisis and yet here I am still operating in business, still sustainable, still making money as a professional portrait artist because that's what I am and that's what I teach and that's what I believe because it didn't matter my business survived. Now, through these global financial crises, one of the first things I learned was, you know who's swimming naked when the tide goes out. Meaning, if your work was to drain out of your studio right now, do you have any money in reserve? No, you don't, you're gonna die. You're swimming naked. The tide goes out and you're left naked, standing in the ocean going, oops, we looked really successful, didn't we? But we didn't have any money in the bank. I did not know how to manage money or save money. I had to learn. These are skills you learn no different than aperture, exposure, and posing. They are skills you can learn. If you want to be, if you want to be sustainable, you need to learn how to manage and save money. This will keep you sustained when the tide goes out. Now, I have learned now to have a reserve for my business. If I don't get a booking for six months, I'm gonna survive. I'm completely okay. My staff are going to survive. And all that stress and fear and pain and desperation around money is not gonna make me stinky because I'm just gonna repel people instead of attracting people into my business because I'm comfortable with the money. It's almost the opposite. If you wanna attract people into your business, you almost have to act like you don't need it and come from a place of giving and service instead of a place of need and desperation. The second you're smelly of need and desperation, you reject instead of project. It's so interesting what you are admitting when you are smelly. So in terms of pricing, here's something that I want to challenge you on, and this is a philosophy around pricing. The psychology of pricing says, give three options, small, medium, and large. So I sell five enlargements, okay? Eight by 12, 11 by 16, 20 by 26, 30 by uh, 24 by 36, and 30 by 45. So there's five enlargements there for the wall, and I've only ever offered five enlargements, okay? Now, they go up in price up to starting at $249 up to $1,500, okay? And I offer framing as well. So I can get an average sale of $1,800 by just offering five prints. When my average went up to $3,500, do you know how I did that? I offered three packages. So instead of uh, a la carte wall portraits, I offered three folio boxes because then you're buying volume in packages. And I priced my packages at $1,200, $1,800, $2,400. And what do you know? 
my average now, $1,800. For three years, they bought my middle package. So then what I did was I changed my packages to $2,800, $3,500, $5,000. And what do you know? They bought my middle package. So I realized regardless, I started to mentor businesses in startup phase, everybody seems to be selling around their medium package. So maybe your pricing is not so much about what is industry standard, but what do you want to earn per shoot? Let's say your average is $1,200 and you want to earn $1,800. I bet you that $1,200 is your middle package and that's why you're selling it. Maybe what you need to do is look at your middle package as being the projected average that you want. So if you want an average for $1,800, readjust your one, two, three pricing so that $1,800 is around your average. Now, to make your bigger packages more attractive, offer more in your bigger packages. So instead of less for less, it's more for more. Okay, so the more money they spend, the more they get. All right, if you study this, you're gonna be quite shocked. Money is not the reason people work and it is not the reason people buy. It is ninth on the list. There are eight other things before money that make people work and shop. Eight. And yet everybody is pricing and selling on price. And you're not pricing and selling on the eight things that come before money. So in the terms of employing someone, I read this, and this is classic Dale Carnegie. So we're talking 1937 here. He said, people will come and work for you. The first reason people will work for you is that they like you. The second is they will like your management team. So if you're your management team, it's more important they like you and how they're being managed than the money they're earning. And three, the product you create. So if you turn that into shopping, who you are, being likable and the product you create come up as a instant beacon before how much you charge does. And yet here you are thinking it's all about money and price because that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get paid instead of trying to give service. So it's such a powerful philosophy to learn that it's not about money. It's about the exchange first. Money is secondary. In fact, when we want something as consumers, we find a way to pay for it. It is what we value that we pay for. So you don't need rich clients, you need people who value photography. And you don't need to speak money, you need to speak value. You need to put value in everything you do and say, but the first thing you need to do is feel the value in yourself so you can project it in everything you do and say. Look at the psychology of the one, two, three. And remember this, a confused mind says no. So if you're confusing people about money at the point of sale consultation, where they haven't even had their portraits yet, then you are not selling anything in this moment but numbers. And you're just confusing people with numbers. You are not even enticing them with experience or what you could create for them or questions. You are simply telling them a whole lot of numbers. It's math at this stage and they don't care because they're not interested in math. In fact, the math is ninth on the list. The value of what you could create, can create and do create is higher on that list. Maybe you should think about that before you start laying down your pricing. I made a very bold statement this year. I said if nobody is going to stand up in this world and say this is what an international standard of portrait pricing is, I'll tell you what it is. I believe a portrait photographer who is taking professional standard portraits should earn at least $1,000 a day. Anything less than that is not profitable, it is not a good cost of goods, it is not a good cost of doing business and it's not gonna get you paid. If anybody wants to challenge me, that's fine. But I'm standing up in this industry and I'm saying you should be earning a minimum of $1,000 a day. I would like you to be earning $1,200 or more. You are worth that. You have done the study, you have done the work and you are doing the time. I stand by it. I will throw down over it. 
and I am prepared for you to stand up and start valuing yourself as a professional because I did and what do you know, I started getting paid.